Welcome everybody in this video in which we're going to talk about the antenna energy gain. Uh, we're going to talk about the power of the antenna, what actually is the antenna. And this is very important because we will, once we understand what is antenna gain, we can understand the difference our conventional antenna are using this gain and the way the space-time antenna is using it in a completely different way. So if you're curious, if you want to know more about this, stay with me because we're going to dive straight away. Now to understand this idea about gain of the antenna, we're going to take a journey and we're going to move in the past, not long ago, about 200 years. We had a brilliant inventor and his name is Alexander Bell. He is the man who discovered the telephone for the first time. Now, before he made this invention, we were using the telegraph. And the telegraph is using Morse code. This means that for each letter from our alphabet, we, ne we need to type several dashes and dots, like a code, in order to represent those symbols. In other words, if you want to send one sentence, need to, pr to press several, maybe hundreds of dashes and dots in order to express these uh, words into a Morse code. This is, as you can see, not very efficient way to communicate. And um, in order to send message or to receive message, you need a specific person who can translate in this Morse code for you. Well, when Alexander Bell created the first telephone, he, was, he used a membrane which can catch this subtle vibration which our voice um, creates. Our voice creates a sound and the sound is a pressure wave. It's compressed the air in a different vibrational patterns and he catch it with a membrane. Not only he catch it with that, but he was able to um, transfer this vibration, this motion, through a copper wire, through conductor, to another membrane and thus then reproduce those vibrations with another membrane, reproducing the sound or the voice. So in this way, we were able to talk from one place and hear the voice in another place. Much more efficient way. You can uh, say a lot of things for one minute, then you can type it with uh, uh, the way that we're using at that time, uh, with a Morse code. So this is a very important story for us to understand because at that time, this, the strength of this signal was measured in bells and nowadays we are using decibels, but still carry the name of this inventor, Alexander Bell. So one decibel is 10% of one bell, it's one tenth. In the same way, one decimeter is 10% of one meter. Now, the decibel, what you need to know, is a logarithmic scale. So it's not scaling like one, two, three, four. It's not the same way it's scaling. It's scaling in a different way. So zero decibels, the difference between zero decibels and three decibels, it's twice. Three decibels are two times more powerful than zero decibels, okay? 10 decibels are 10 times more powerful, okay? Uh, but 20 decibels are 100 times more powerful, not 20 times. So I'm not going to go into details about the logarithmic scale. You can see other videos to understand more. But for us, it's very important to understand how we can use the decibels and specifically uh, what we call a DBI, because DBI, it comes from a decibels. Uh, the way we express the decibels is with small d and with capital B. Uh, but when we add another one, a letter after that, we can, uh, we will know what actually we are measuring. And with the DBI, we are measuring the gain of the antenna. Now, these vibrations that uh, were sent through the phone, later on, we were using antennas uh, to propagate these vibrations, these subtle motions through space, through thin air. And we were using antennas to do that. Uh, the antennas are passive components from an electrical circuit which cannot create or cannot generate energy or power but can radiate this energy or can receive this energy 
and when it's radiating this energy when the antenna are radiating this power as electromagnetic radiation they create pattern of radiation they ca can create different patterns depends on what antenna you have so to understand energy gain we need to understand the pattern the pattern of these antennas when the antenna has a spherical pattern we call this pattern isotropic iso it's coming from latin it means equal isotropic it means that the antenna is radiating equally in all directions that's why it's called isotropic pattern of radiation in that case if we have five watts of energy of power and we radiate it uh, in the antenna in that way in an isotropic way we will radiate it equally in all direction and let's say we can cover one mile of a radius in this way basically perfect isotropic antenna we believe that do not exist but very close to the perfect spherical shape is the monopole antenna which creates something similar but it's a little bit like a donut shape so it has a little bit more directionality it's not exactly spherical and we can say that it's very close to isotropic but it's not exactly isotropic uh, so when we have isotropic pattern of radiation we have zero dbi dbi is decibels but i is from isotropic so with zero dbi we have a perfect spherical pattern of radiation so if we take this energy which is radiating in all direction and we, if we are able to focus it in a particular direction which we prefer to compress to condense this uh, radiation thus then we can increase the power in this in this direction that we focus it okay so when we increase this power we call this gain because it's gaining more power in that direction but the overall power can be remaining 5 watts but if we squeeze it if we reflect it in a in certain way it will create more power in that direction and this this is what we call energy gain of the antenna so we will have higher dbi if we uh, instead of one mile radius if we if we cover two miles this is going to be three dbi okay of the antenna if we cover 10 miles of a, uh, of a distance this is going to be 10 dbi if we cover 100 miles with this the same power 5 watts this is going to be um, 20 dbi so you can see that when we using the same power the antenna does not generate more power but we squeeze it and in order to do that we reflect it we use different kind of reflectors you can think about this um, by the way we squeeze the visible light if you have a flashlight or torch in in your hand and you play with the beam you make it wider or narrow you will see that when it's narrow we can reach a further distance because the density of the light is higher in that way so electromagnetic radiation it's the same like the visible light the difference is that is in the lower frequency all the spectrum from Elect what we call electromagnetic radiation it is actually light but what we see from this spectrum it's a very small percentage it's maybe 0.5 percent very small bandwidth with our eyes and we see very high frequency our eyes are like antenna which can which are tuned to see very very high frequency we are talking about hundreds of tetrahertz here of trillions of cycles per second hundreds of trillions of cycles per second this is how our eyes are designed this is how marvelous are our eyes so even though uh, this frequency is so high that we are not using even hertz we're using angstroms i'm i'm telling you this to, just to understand that it's very easy analogy to understand the electromagnetic spectrum and the visible light we can compare like analogy to understand how when we squeeze the visible light when we compress it we can reach further distance we can increase the gain so in that way we increase the energy gain of the antenna and this is measured in dbi 
and with dBm we measure the power of the antenna or how many uh, watts. Zero dBm it's one milliwatt power. Uh, so if you have three dBm it's two milliwatts power. So if you have let's say thirty seven dBm it's five watt power. So with dBm we measure the power and with a dBi we measure how much of this power we are squeezing in a particular direction and we increase the gain. In order to understand even better, even easier this, you can think about your Wi-Fi router antenna at home like a monopole antenna which has a pattern of radiation close to isotropic pattern. So it doesn't matter where you move at your home, which room you are, you were able to catch the Wi-Fi, the internet. But if you go a few hundred meters away, you won't be able to catch the signal. In order to catch the signal in a long distance, you need to squeeze this power, create it directional, like the satellites on the roof. Uh, they have dishes, they have parabolic dishes. They reflect this frequency. They reflect this light, this electromagnetic radiation uh, in a such a way that they increase the gain and thus then you can reach very, very long distance. You can reach the satellite which is orbiting the Earth. So in, in this way, it's, it doesn't, um, the directional antenna with higher gain, it is not better than isotropic antenna. It is just different. If you uh, have a broadcasting station, let's say if you broadcast anything that uh, TV or radio and you are in the middle of the town, you will prefer pe perhaps to have a isotropic antenna and to radiate it equally in all direction. Thus then arrive to many, many people around you. But if you're living outside and if you have a TV station that it's in a particular direction, you may prefer to have a directional antenna and to point it in that direction so you can receive the signal. But with directional antenna, if you move a little bit uh, the antenna, you, you, you won't be able to pick up the signal. You know, so they have, it's a trade-off situation. So now as you see what is a gain of an antenna, how we measure it with dBi and how the power of antenna is measured with dBm. Let's see uh, what's the difference between conventional antenna and the space-time antenna. Well, conventional antenna, in order to reflect this uh, power in a, that, in a particular direction, they use something called reflectors. And these reflectors, they may look like uh, bars which are behind the receivers in the Yagi antennas. But also they may look like um, parabolic dishes, like in our satellite antennas. They may look differently, but they are reflectors. They are reflecting the frequency in our direction that we prefer. So this is basically our conventional antennas. But in the space-time antenna, we have the Merkaba, we have the star tetrahedron inside. And this is isometric shape. Isometric, again, it's iso, equal, metric measurement. It has an equal measurements from the center. All the points are in equal space from the center. This is why we call it isometric. And because it's isometric, also we'll have isotropic pattern of radiation or spherical pattern of radiation. But in this way now, as you know, we're going to have a zero dBi. We're not going to have a gain of the antenna. But we are not using reflector like parabolic dish. Instead, in the space-time antenna, we are using a sphere made out of copper all around this Merkaba, all around this star tetrahedron. In that way, we are not reflecting the power in one direction, but we reflect it from all directions toward the center. We are concentrating it towards the center. In this way, we create energy gain not in one direction, but at the center, from all directions to the center. We are compressing, in a sense, this uh, radio frequency or this um, electromagnetic radiation or this light, which is not visible for our eyes because it's just in a millions of frequency, not in a trillions, but it's still light. It's still what is... Uh, what we call light, but it's in the lower frequency. So we compress this radio frequency, in a sense, in the center with this sphere. Because this sphere is made out of copper, 
and copper is conductive material but also has the ability, very good ability to reflect the radio frequency, to reflect electromagnetic radiation. So now as you can see the idea of zero point energy, because when you're talking about zero point energy, you need to talk about one point, a zero point where this energy is compressed, when this energy is gaining power, when this energy can be transformed into something bigger or something higher. And this uh, idea can be very obvious in the space-time antenna because we reflect the RF or the radio frequency towards the center where we increase the gain in the single spot. And this is the main difference between the conventional antenna and the space-time antenna. Of course, there are many other differences because the space-time antenna is three-dimensional fractal antenna. But we're going to talk about this in a different video. I will do my best to keep each video between 10 and 15 minutes, maximum 20. Um, in the next video, we're going to talk about the light signal. We're going to talk about energy, what is uh, the parallel between energy, radiation, light signal and how this light signal is when it's traveling create different conditions like a refraction right like a reflection and how this reflection actually is very important and relates to the geometry of the space-time antenna and what effects uh, what effect can create in space-time antenna we can see this from many different angles many different approaches we can see it from conventional point of view with the terms that we already know in our conventional physics but we can explore it also from the extraterrestrial point of view because we know now how they see those ideas differently from the way we see it. So this is what we're going to talk in the next video. Uh, I'm very grateful that you are interested. I want to share with you that in the process of creating this video and share this information, much more information is coming to me from other sources. Um, you are helping me to learn more and also information coming from inside, as an inside. And there is so many things I would like to share with you that it's hard to decide what actual information not to share at that point. So in this video, you understand what is energy gain of the antenna. You understand that it's measured in a DBI because it's compared from isotropic to directional antenna, the difference. You understand also that the DBM is measuring the power of the antenna in milliwatts. Uh, and you can see that the space-time antenna is focusing and making higher power or higher gain at the center while the conventional antenna radiated outward. This is very important for us to know. And those of you who are more spiritual and more interested about the consciousness and to relate this idea, you can also draw a parallels. You can understand that when we are, as a human, we are a consciousness. And when we see deep inside of ourselves, when we focus inward, thus then we can discover our beliefs, our definitions, we can transform them and we can gain more power. Only then we can gain more power and we can express this power outward in a different way. So this idea of energy gain concentration inward, it can relate also to what we call consciousness and to us like a human beings and as like a personal power as well, like a personal energy gain. It depends from which perspective you approach it. So thank you very much for um, joining me in this video. I will be very glad to see you in the next one.